This is section 3.1, Derivatives of Polynomial and Exponential Functions. Now, first I'm going to review continuity because it was something we didn't really do so well with on the test. So, the definition of a function f is continuous at a number a if the limit of a, as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. So, notice the definition 1 implicitly requires three things to happen. f of a has to be defined and has to be in the domain of f. The limit as x approaches a of f of x exists, and the limit of x approaches a f of x must equal f of a. So this is a continuous function because all three of those requirements are satisfied. So are these continuous? What about f equals 1, f at 3, and f at 5? So here you should pause the PowerPoint, decide your decisions, and then hit play when, I, when you get done. So f of, f of 1, no, because the graph has a break there. Of, and officially because f of 1 is not defined. What about f of 3? No, f of 3 is defined, yet the limit does not exist because the left and the right limits are different. What about f of 5? No again, f of 5 is defined and the limit exists, but it is not equal to the function. So right here, the first rule is broken. For f of 3, the second rule is broken. And for f of 5, the third rule is broken. So you must have all three to have a continuous function. Derivative rules. All right, so the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of x is 1 because the exponent to x is 1. And the power rule says the derivative of x to the n equals n times x raised to the n minus 1. n has to be a real number. So let's look at f of x equals c. The graph is below. It is a horizontal line at y equals c, which has a slope of 0. Therefore, that is why the derivative of c equals 0 because the derivative is a slope. Derivative of the power function, f of x equals x to the n. n must be positive. If n equals 1, then f of x equals x, which is a, which is a line with a slope of 1. Reason why f of x equals the derivative of x equals 1, if that makes any sense. That would work with any, it's, it works with every function, but it's easiest to show with a line because we can easily find the slope of that line. The power rule. If n is a positive integer, then the derivative of x to the n equals n times x to the n minus 1. So here's some examples. So f of x equals x to the 6. So what we need to do is we got to bring the 6 down, times it out front, and then do 6 minus 1. And that gives us 6 times x to the 5th. Same for the next one. Bring the 4 out front, write the t, and then do 4 minus 1, which will give us the derivative being 4t to the 3rd. More examples, 1 divided by x squared. So that means that we can rewrite this, as you've learned, as x to the negative 2. Once we rewrite this as x to the negative 2, we can bring the 2 out front and then subtract 1 from the negative 2. That gives us negative 2 times x to the negative 3. Once we get this, we can put our x to the negative 3 back on the bottom because we don't want negative exponents, and this is our final solution. All right, so what about f of x equals 3, root 3 of x squared. Try this and then come back to the example. The solution is first we can rewrite it as x to the two-thirds. That means bring the two-thirds out front, take two-thirds and subtract one, which is two-thirds x to the negative one-third. Even more, find the equation of the tangent line and the normal line to the curve. y equals x times the root x at the point one one. So the derivative of f of x is x times root x, or as we can rewrite it, x times x to the one half. When we do that, when we multiply exponents, when multiplying numbers with exponents, we end up adding the exponents. So therefore, it's x to the three halves. So when we take the derivative of this, we pull the three halves out front, leave the x, and take three halves minus one. Therefore, we get three halves x to the one half, or we can rewrite that as three halves root x. Once, now we are given this. So now we need to plug in 1 to find our slope. So we plug in 1 to this. The root of 1 is 1. 1 times 3 halves is 3 halves. Therefore, the equation of the tangent line, we're going to put the slope of 3 halves right there because that's what we found. y minus y1 and x minus x1. And then we get this line. The normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line. So its slope is a negative reciprocal of 3 halves, which is negative two-thirds. Thus, the equation of the normal line is as follows.
All right, the constant multiple multiple rule. If c is a constant and f is differentiable, then we can pull the c out front. The sum and difference rule. If f and g are both differentiable, then we can add them. We can find the derivative of them. We can add the derivative of f plus the derivative of g if it's a sum, or we could subtract, subtract the derivative of f minus derivative of g if it's a difference. So here's an example. Try these on your own. 3 times x to the 4th is going to be 4 times 3, which is 12, and then x to the 4 minus 1. All right? And then, defining it a negative x, it's going to be negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1, I mean negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. The sum and difference rule. Here's an example of it. So if it's in here like this, we can add and subtract the individual derivatives. So follow this example and see if you come out to the same solution that I did. 8x to the 7 plus 60x to the 4 minus 16x to the 3rd plus 30x squared minus 6. The derivative of a natural exponent exponential function. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, where e is a number such that the limit as h approaches 0, e to the h minus 1 over h equals 1. So one last example. If f of x equals e to the x minus x, find the first derivative and find the second derivative. That's what that means. f prime is first derivative, f double prime is the second derivative. So the first derivative, when we're going to find this, it's going to be e to the x minus x. Well, what that really means is we're going to find the derivative of e to the x and subtract the derivative of x. Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of x is 1 because there's a little exponent of 1 up here. Now, to find the second derivative, when we do this, we're going to separate them again. Derivative of e to the x minus the derivative of 1. The derivative of 1 is 0, so it's going to be e to the x minus 0 or just plain e to the x. And that's it.